Honestly, I'm not kidding. There, there's a lot of great things that the people closest to us suggest that because they're so close to us, we often don't listen to or, or, or they're difficult to hear. And I think that is a great example of something that we can all try to take away the emotional side of our communications to focus on the practical and hear each other more clearly and more honestly. Hello, and welcome to the Art of Living Well podcast. I'm Stephanie May Potter, and I'm here with my co-host, Marnie Dotches marmette We created the Art of Living Well podcast to empower you to live your happiest, healthiest, and most authentic life. Each week, we will bring you inspiring and motivating conversations covering health and wellness topics, including fitness, mindset, food, travel, product reviews, and strategies from a variety of experts, including our own bank of knowledge. We are excited to educate, motivate, and inspire you to change the way you perceive health and discover your art of living well. Get ready to feel inspired. Hello, and welcome back to the Art of Living Well podcast. We want to wish you a happy and healthy holiday season, and thank you for listening to our podcast this past year. We are so grateful for all of our listeners and subscribers, and next week, the week of December 26th, we will be off. We will be spending time with our families and our friends and just enjoying the present moment, so wishing you a happy and healthy new year. And before we dive into today's episode, I just want to remind you all to sign up for our 14-day functional medicine liver detox. We're super excited about this two-week journey that we're all going to be taking together in the beginning of January, and you can sign up. The link is in our show notes or on our website, theartoflivingwell.us, and we hope that you will join us. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Shield Your Body. Shield Your Body is a company that makes products to shield your body against electromagnetic frequency, or EMF radiation, from modern technology. Did you know that all modern technology is a source of EMF radiation? Cell phones, laptops, Wi-Fi, even your refrigerator is a source of EMF radiation. And each year, we are exposed to more and more EMFs. There are literally thousands of high quality peer reviewed scientific studies demonstrating clear links between exposure to EMF radiation and a wide range of negative health effects from anxiety and infertility to sleep disruption and cancer. Fortunately, there are easy ways that you can reduce your EMF exposure right now that cost you absolutely nothing. After reading the Shield Your Body Guide, I stopped using my AirPods something I used daily for hours sometimes and have switched back to the old school wired headphones. And for me, after reading the Shield Your Body Guide, I really put my foot down and insisted that my kids keep their cell phones and their laptops out of their bedrooms at night while they were sleeping. And I've been working on Jordan as well. And I think after reading the guide and listening to our podcast, he has finally agreed to do that. So download your copy of a free guide at shieldyourbody.com to start improving your health right now. And be sure to check out our episode number 123 with R. Blank, CEO of Shield Your Body. So today's episode is going to be a fun one. So we're bringing back our spouses, John and Jordan. And for those of you who have been following us for a while and listening to the podcast, we dropped an episode. It was a salt and pepper episode, we called it. Gosh, it's been probably two years now. And so we're excited to bring John and Jordan back. And we're going to do kind of a little bit of a health transformation audit, which is what we've been doing with our community members for the last several months. So thank you, John and Jordan, for joining us today. And we're going to dive right in. And John, why don't you, we'll start with you. And let's just take a minute to set your vision. So if you could look out into the future six months from now, so maybe that's June, May or June of 2023, and you had your ideal life when it comes to your health and your happiness, what would it look like? And maybe even talk about what your ideal day would look like. Well, I think one thing that I think about um, when it comes to an ideal life and ideal day, it's one that takes less thought about how to live that ideal life and ideal day. Um, you know, I, as I think about where I am on my health journey, that the, the choices I make and the the options in front of me, 
everything seems so intentional and thoughtful and purposeful as opposed to just part of how the day progresses. So to me, the ideal day and the, that vision is one where we spend less time thinking about the specifics of what we do and get to enjoy the moments we have, right? So you eat the foods that you eat, you get the results, you exercise, you get the results, you know, you're, you're enjoying your life, but not being so thoughtful about the specificity to which you live it, um, which is a function of habits. It's a function of building good choices. It's a function of getting the outcomes that you want so that you're reinforcing those and doing them. And in the end, it's also just focused on being present. Um, and, and like I said, enjoying a day for the fact that it's a day, not that it's one more day to think about how do I live a better life and do things in a better way. I love how you said that you want to focus on the present and you're, I love how you said that because I think that so many people do, you know, when you focus on your vision or your ideal day, you know, they're getting into the minutia of every moment and then you're almost losing the moment. So you, you said that really well. And Marnie, that, that is so much kind of the element of it is one little thing can distract us from reality. And one little thing can distract us from the bigger picture. And that one little thing can then also drag us down. And, and so recognizing that a day is 24 hours, right? A year is 365 days, but you got to take everyone to enjoy it for what it is. And, and part of that is ensuring we do the best to live our our best life and our longest life, but also to enjoy the life that we have in the moments we have, because you can't get them back. And every, every day passes, our kids get older, we get older, um, new opportunities arise, other opportunities pass us by, got to live our lives. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Jordan, when you think about, you know, your life six months down the road or just an ideal day or vision for you? What does that look like? Yeah. So I love John's comment about appreciating the moment. It's funny. I, I really enjoy variety in my life. So if I had one ideal day and then I lived that day each and every day, that that would not be ideal. That would be hell. So <laughs> um so I I mean I could say that I, you know, I would love to incorporate you know, uh, exercise and free time and family time and a little bit of work and a little bit of this and that sprinkled in. But, um, but I really enjoy changing it up. And so enjoying the moment and changing it up, having variety, spice of life. I love the male perspective. I know. We've never had these answers when we've had women <laughs> on and it's just, it's the yin and the yang. It's awesome. Absolutely. And something that John said kind of struck me that we talk about with women mainly is like trying to control every little aspect of your day when it comes to your wellness. So your food and what you're eating and, oh gosh, I worked out or I didn't have a chance to work out. And so just taking a step back from all of that minutia, I think is really, um, is great advice for our listeners, just motivation for them as we head into 2023. So John, we can go back to you. So thinking of this ideal day, what's, what's holding you back from getting to that place? Or maybe you're already there and I just don't see it when we're, you know, um, coexisting together in our, in our home work environments most days. But is there something that, you know, you need to get yourself to that next level? Well, part of it comes back to it's balance, you know, and, and, you know, Jordan's comment about variety and, 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 you know, which I totally agree with the, the need to have different experiences versus repetition, which repetition leads to habits. And, you know, that, I think that is often for me, one of the challenges is, is the, the nature of a habit is a repetitive behavior. And yet that redundancy is boring to me. So that variety contrasts with repetition, which contrasts with habits. So sometimes variety leads to bad habits or undermining the good habits that create those things you don't think about, but create that long-term, um, ideal situation. So for me, that's, that's often one of the struggles that I have is, you know, the, the, I mean, I'll be honest, Steph, the, your smoothie every day, like frightens me. The repetition of your smoothie is like scary to me because there's like no variety. Um, for you, it's a phenomenal habit. It's a healthy habit. I respect it. It just, for me, that's a difficult thing to embrace. Um, <laughs> so how do you find variety and yet repetition and good habits to create good outcomes over time? 
And maybe it's something like, you know, changing up the fruit you put in your smoothie or finding, you know, five different breakfasts that are healthy that you can rotate over time. And so there's ways, I think, to add variety to a habit. Um, and then it maybe would feel less repetitive. Exactly. Although, Marnie, I, I don't know how you can come up with different fruits to not come up looking like baby poop. <laughs> which is what her smoothies look like every day. <laughs> yeah, they, but they're they, good. They taste good. I mean, I love them, but I think John has PTSD over the blender because whenever he's like always on a call at that point when I'm making it and it's like loud and we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We need a soundproof room for your office, I think, so you don't hear my Well, your, your smoothies are also very thick. So the amount of blending versus whirring that goes on, right? I mean, that, I think that's where the that's where the trauma comes in. I hear a lot of spinning and not a lot of blending. Uh, but these are the fun things about life. Of course, yeah. we have to be a little silly here. We can't all just be technical. This is the reality, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and so we have to make fun of ourselves and make fun of each other. Because if we can't make fun of ourselves and make fun of each other, then it is really hard to have that life where you don't get stuck in the little things, right? Yeah. Those yes. little yeah. things will totally get in the way of laughing at ourselves and laughing at one another. Right. I mean, I, I, I'd be the first to point out, I mean, I make smoothies and, and do, and I mean, many ways and some of the best habits that Stephanie has, I think I follow. And yet there are plenty of places we deviate or we do them differently. And, you know, how do I get different outcomes or the same outcomes, different ways, or it's all part of just, you know, recognizing there is no one way to do anything. And I think that that's a big part of where, recognizing that sometimes the, the things that I'll do or the ways that I'll approach things may be less effective, maybe more effective, or maybe as effective. But Stephanie and I don't have to do everything the same way to get similar outcomes. And it, creating space for that for one another, so I can make fun of her baby poop smoothies because that's not how I make my smoothies. But I recognize for her, it works. It works well. It's what she does. And that's perfect. You know, I'll get to the same place a different way and creating those habits to do it well. And then Again, to not repeat the same thing, what else can I do to create similar levels of nutrient, sustenance, protein, et cetera, without creating repetition? And, and I'm good adding to that. I'm good with the 80-20. And it's not saying that, you know, 80% I'm successful and 20% I'm a failure, but 80% I'm following, you know, this maybe my ideal day or, or, or better nutrition and 20%, I'm changing it up like on purpose. It's not a failure. It's, it's adding in the, the fun. Well, and I think like Jordan, like you said earlier, you don't want the repetition. Both of you have kind of said you like that you need the variety. So you need that 20% to keep you going for the 80%. You know, it kind of fuels then living your best day. Well, I was just going to say, John, I also really like what you said, how, you know, even though you guys are partners, you find different ways to do diff the same thing, maybe, or to get to the same result. And I think that's so important. And Stephanie and I have talked a lot about that on our show about the control that many of us have where we think our way is the right way and the only way. And so I just think it's really good to take a step back and remember that, like, there are multiple ways to do things and your way is not always the right way. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> We've never talked about this in our house, just so you're, yeah, you're clear here. I was just going to say for either of you to answer, what do you think is going well for you in your lives right now when it comes to your health and wellness? So have made multiple changes of decreasing caffeine intake of trying to, to get more exercise days per week having more, more of the baby poop, uh, I guess we can call it now, smoothies, <laughs> um, for breakfast, um, and, uh, and, and making some better choices about food, uh, adding more veggies into my diet, uh, decreasing some of the, the protein intake or, you know, animal protein intake. So, so lots of things I can be proud of, uh, and recognizing that I have plenty of work, uh, to do to be in a healthier spot. Which is why, uh, you know, not to jump the gun, but why I enjoy the detoxes as 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 a a time to reset and a time to challenge myself to to do something that's that's hard, but something I'll feel good and proud about at the end of it, 
and then trying to make some of those habits stick through the course of the, of the year. So, so doing the, the periodic detoxes uh, has worked great doing it three or four times a year. Well, Jordan, you maybe you want to tell everyone about your big success the first time or one of the first times you did the detox with coffee. So I, I successfully broke a, a coffee, shall we say, habit, uh, dependence, maybe. But I'm back to having it maybe two days a week, which is then enjoying it on my terms, mm-hmm. as opposed to, um, you know, needing it to to stave off headaches and grumpiness. I didn't know that. Which, <laughs> well, you know what, Jordan, I'm with you because I gave up coffee many years ago. And then I was like, you know, but I do enjoy So on the weekends, when I know I usually up later, I don't have to, I'm not going to bed as early. It's not going to affect me. I enjoy a nice latte and it's the perfect balance for me. I think that's what the detox does is it resets the habit and habits or starts new ones. And then you can kind of like ease back into what is sustainable for you. And it sounds like you figured that out. And what's interesting there, you know, is back to those habits and you know, I'll, I'll jump to the detox topic quickly, and then I'll come back to Marnie's question. But you know, for me, the detox is a great reset. It's a pause. It, it it's an element just to to change the pattern of whatever that pattern is. Um, one of the things I'm I'm you know most happy with or proud of about is there are many things that I've taken out of my diet that were there over time, and that you know in in aggregate um, aren't healthy. I think certain things in moderation, you know, certainly appear. But I've also have a very consistent composition of things that are good for me and are healthy. And so when I look at the long-term composition of what I'm able to enjoy and balance in my life, I think it, it, it's good. Um, I mean, frankly, I'm not happy with my weight right now. I've managed to accumulate some extra pounds that apparently somebody dropped and I picked them up and I'm trying to think about, well, what do I have to change differently to, to not accumulate these extra pounds? What have I, what have I stopped doing or started doing that enable that to happen? And how do I both shift myself back to where I want to be, um, but also then continue that maintenance, given I don't perceive I change things in what I was doing, but yet clearly something changed because I'm getting different outcomes. Um, and again, the, the cleanses to me also create a great opportunity to reset that, um, you know, to kind of clean out some of the bad things and the things that are holding you back and then set a, a pattern and pace going forward to do things um, that are going to help you make you, help you feel good, live well, and... Uh, and certainly uh, build on those those habits. And as an example, I don't get headaches when I don't drink coffee. So, like the, 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 anything I stop doing during a uh, during a cleanse, I have zero adverse effects. And I know that's not the same for everybody. I'm very fortunate. I'm very resilient, perhaps. Um, you know, I don't get yeah, if I have coffee, great. If I don't have coffee, I'm fine. But to me, it's just purely I enjoy coffee. Um, but I think that's also something to overcome is that fear of the adverse effects of these things, you know, and I'm fortunate that I don't notice adverse effects, but they are temporary and they give you a chance to realize the impacts of the things that you've taken out of your daily routine. Absolutely. And I just want to say that I find that Jordan, when you do the detox at the same time as me, I find it really useful and helpful because we're eating the same things. I'm not being tempted by whatever you're eating um, and vice versa. And the kids, well, we only have one at home now, but she just goes along with it and eats whatever we make. And so I would encourage people to try and, you know, join in on the detox with their significant other or spouse, because it is really helpful to have that cheerleader right in your house, or maybe they're not a cheerleader, maybe they're complaining, but then you're cheering them on. Yes, totally agree. So one question for both of you, you guys can, you know, answer as, as you will, is what's one thing in the next 24 hours that you could do to lead you to your ideal day, your vision for 2023, something that will just help on that journey or on that path? And it can be like the smallest, the absolute smallest thing. Oh, I'm going to listen to my wife. That would help me a ton. Uh, oh, God, John. <laughs> no, I said, I'm not kidding. There, there's a lot of great things that the people closest to us suggest that because they're so close to us, we often don't listen to them or, or, or they're difficult to hear. And I think that is a great example of something that we can all try to take away the emotional side of our communications to focus on the practical and hear each other more clearly and more honestly. I, I agree because I, I mean, we have this conversation at home about other matters. So it is hard when your spouse or someone that's close to you 
feel, you know, you feel like they're nagging or, you know, trying to get you to do something their way. And I think it's like a conversation talking about the outcomes and how you want to feel and then figure out what works for each individual person to how to get there. And it sounds like, you know, all of us as part of this conversation today are, you know, that, that we're, we're striving for that. And I think that's, that's what's helpful just having these conversations is being in that, um, real, having that realization that we're all different and we're all have different journeys and paths and different habits that we can create to get us to that, to that point. So Jordan, what about, what about for you? Yeah, now you're going to make me look bad, John, because uh, I'm not. I, I wasn't going to talk about listening to my wife, um, but but uh, I, I, I was Jordan. I was talking about listening to your wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just going to listen to someone's wife. It's probably not me, but someone else's wife. <laughs> so, so I was just going to say, there's there's lots of little changes um, that that can be made. Lots of little tweaks, which you know each individual one isn't so hard. All all together, it becomes challenging, but you know, resisting the urge to, to stop at the cabinet and, and eat another handful of chips. Um, chips and crackers are, you know, are one of my, uh, downfalls. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's a little thing, um, you know, jumping on the Peloton and, uh, and getting a ride in, you know, sitting down, uh, you know, turning off the TV and sitting down and, and reading a book for, for 30 minutes. I mean, these are all very easy things individually to do, um, that just, you know, would, would make me happier at the end of the day, um, to, to look back and breathe a sigh of relief, uh, getting, getting a better night's sleep. Um, you know, which isn't about the the sleep quality, but about actually getting into bed earlier <laughs> and shutting down. Um, so, so lots of ideas come to mind, um, of things that I can tweak. And I suppose my wife tells me about all those things. So I could frame that as listening to my wife <laughs> as well. <laughs> but I'm trying really hard not to. I'm try. I, I want it to come from within. Like, mm -hmm. that's so important. Like, you need to do, both of you, all of us actually, need to do what's good for us, right? And hopefully, what's good for us is going to lead us to long lives, happy lives, and lives where we can do the things we want to do. That's that's my end goal, at least. Exactly. And I think it's just having that vision and thinking about how you want to live, live your life and the quality of your life come 10, 20, 30 years, that that can sometimes be the motivation that you need to, to start that new habit, to get on the Peloton, to, you know, go to bed early, all those things, Jordan, that you mentioned. I know we, we know a lot of our listeners have those exact same challenges. So, And then I would just add, not getting caught up in the minutia of it, like John mentioned, and enjoying the moment that you're in. Mm -hmm. So not stressing about all those things that you may want to change, but just like trying to be in the moment. Absolutely. As I look out in like this pretty white blanket of snow that has been falling for the last several hours and just, yeah, just get outside, take five minutes and just enjoy without distraction, right? And to enjoy the moment. So thank you guys so much for coming on today. It was really fun to hear both of your perspectives and funny. And um, yeah. Well, we look forward to you joining the detox with us and being part of our community. So you can offer support to, you know, to the newbies that will join us and encourage everyone. Stephanie and Marnie, thank you for having Jordan and I on. Uh, it is fun to poke fun at each other, but to join and share part of our journey. And frankly, you know, I think it's amazing what you two are doing, both with your podcast and, and in general with your coaching. And, you know, as someone who is a spouse to this situation, it gives me one perspective. But as someone who just sees what you guys are doing and achieving, the folks you're connecting with, the things you're learning and what you're sharing, it's awesome to be on that journey with you. So thanks for letting us join this podcast for a second time. And hopefully we've earned a right to come back a third time, Jordan. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Add a little salt and pepper. <laughs> thanks for having us. Exactly. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening to the Art of Living Well podcast. We are so grateful that you joined us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or anyone else you think may benefit from this information. 
We'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and tag the Art of Living Well podcast on social media. If you want more inspiration in between episodes, you can find us on social media at the Art of Living underscore well on Instagram and Facebook, where we will share snippets from our daily lives and our journey to living well. Thank you.